What's up you totally obsessed tennis players? Today I'm going to teach you four serves to ace any opponent. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to show you today four serves that I used to use all the time to get those free points when you really wanted one. Uh, if you've never really watched my channel before, uh, a little bit about me. I've been coaching now for over 30 years and when I played I was a state champion top 100 in the, in the nation uh, in the juniors and played number one at a division one college team. And I can tell you that these four stars I'm gonna show you today, if you can follow my instruction, will get you aces and free points. So let's get started. Number one serve I like to use to get free points and aces as a lefty you probably can guess it, it's that out wide lefty slice serve. What works so great for the serve for me is the angles you can get your opponent off the court, making them really struggle, especially on their backhand side. And even if it comes back, you have an open court, but often you could ace them because of the angles you can create. Now, righties, you should not be sleeping on this. In fact, we're gonna be showing two angles on this so you can see the righty version. For a righty, you'd be serving this on the due side, looking to slice the ball off the court. And two players come to mind when I really see this done so well, and that's the great Roger Federer, who we're gonna miss seeing on the court. And then Novak Djokovic is also amazing at the serve. In fact, he pretty much used it exclusively on the due side to eke that win against Daniel Medvedev. He used, Novak used the serve exclusively on the two side against Daniel Medvedev in that war they had at the year end championships. It was a great match. So let's talk about the important things you need to do to start really mastering this slice serve. So the first thing we want to think about is the grip and you definitely need to be in a continental grip. If you're not in a continental grip, you're not gonna be able to create that spin that you need to make the ball cut and get off the court. So you need to have spin in order to hit this ball off the court. That's a non-negotiable. So you gotta start working on that if you haven't yet. Now, even more than that, you know, this is the traditional continental grip. They call it the chopper grip. I like to also open the grip up for extra spin. I, I like to think of this, I call this the Milos Ronis grip because when you see him serve, he always kind of had his hand open like this. So you want those strings, the more you can get comfortable and they naturally face open as you hold the ball under the racket, that's gonna help you get that extra spin. A great little exercise you can do is actually just sit here and buzz and cut the ball. This is the feeling you wanna be able to have and it's a lot easier when your frame is more open and this is gonna help the ball move off the court faster. All right, the second ingredient you need to be able to do to be able to ace people like a pro is the toss, the toss location. Super important when you are throwing a slice serve toss that it lands into the court, out in front, out to the side, and into the court. Because if your toss is going to be landing even with you or behind you, it's gonna be hard for your shoulders and your hips to rotate. When you're able to throw the ball out in front, it's easy to make your shoulders and your hip rotate, which is gonna help you get the ball off the court. Okay, so I'm just gonna demo a couple to really show you where you want that toss. You need that toss out in front and out to the side a little bit so that you can really carve that ball and move your hips and your shoulders easy, help you rotate that ball off the court. See if it's out in front, the further you can reach out for it, that was even better. You can make that ball really rotate off the court very easy because it just is a nice release in your shoulder and your hip area, which you're gonna need to get that ball to move. If the ball is even with you, if the ball is even or behind, it gets very, very tough to get that thing to move across and off the court. Okay, the next element we need to think about is where are we going to hit that tennis ball? And I think about hitting it to the outside. Some coaches will tell you to be brushing across the ball. I, I know that I'm not gonna be hitting the ball actually on the side, but I just think about hitting it on the outside, really cutting that ball up on the outside, and I find that that makes the ball move a whole heck of a lot if I'm able to make that work. You can see that ball go way off the court. Okay, we got two more things we need to think about so we could be hitting these aces out wide. The next is another topic of debate among coaches, and that is the, the role of the hands and the wrist. To be able to make this ball really slice and move and have some speed and some action, 
I really focus on the wrist and the hands. We want the entire arm loose as a goose. We want lots of racket head speed. Okay, we want a ton of racket head speed when we're hitting the serve and some People will talk about the science of tennis and say how the wrist is actually stabilized the contact, which it is. I'm not here to debate that, but we're talking about feel, okay? When you get the feel, you can make things real for yourself. So as I'm coming here, I'm thinking about a whole lot of racket head speed to get that ball move up the court. A whole lot of racket head speed, and the faster I can whip, the more I can get that ball to move, okay? So I'm thinking about coming here Lots of racket head speed, lots of action to get that ball to move. Lots of racket head speed. The faster I can make the racket head speed move, the more I can get the ball to move. Okay, so two things I want you to focus on to finish this ace up here out wide, whether you're a righty or a lefty. Remember, if you're a righty, you're doing this on the deuce side. But notice I've got Lisa Dotson's toss master right here, which I like. If I'm standing right here close to the midline, it's going to be very tough for me to get the ball in the box and off the court, although that was pretty good. But if I'm going to play a complete match and I'm staying this close to the midline, I'm going to end up missing a lot of serves wide because the math just isn't working for me, okay? If I come here, now I can make the ball move across the court and still go in the box like that. That was, that was amazing right there. Look how short that went. Again, you don't need to, even need to hit the ball fast when you can make the ball move that far off the court. It's about the, the angle that you're getting that's getting you the free points. And then the final thing I want you to think about is when you go, I want you to sweep all the way to the big finish. Do not follow through and stop your swing. You want to come here, ice cream scoop finish I like to call it, and that's going to help the ball really buzz and move off the court. All right, let's go into our second money A serve. Okay, so the second serve that I love to use to get aces is the flat out wide serve on the deuce side. So for righties, you're gonna really want this serve because it's gonna be the flat out wide serve on the ad side, which again, we're gonna show you examples, uh, flip the camera angle so you can see how it's gonna look whether you're a righty or a lefty. And, but, but our strategy is a little different because me as a lefty when I'm doing this, is I'm only going to be looking to hit the serve 10 times or less in a match. When we're talking about the out wide slice, which I showed you in the, in the first example, I'm thinking about hitting that so many times in a match, I even count. But I'm waiting for the big points to bring that serve out wide on the deuce side because it is higher risk as far as I'm going over the higher part of the net and we don't have much spin on the ball. And then also it is going to my opponent's forehand. Most of the time I'll be playing a right-handed player. So there's a couple things I really gotta think about to be able to hit this serve well. The first one, again, it all goes back to the grip. When you, when you start playing at a higher level, you realize that you do kind of move the grip around a little bit to get some advantages for free. So I'm trying to get this ball to break off the court and hit it flat, right? When I was gonna hit that slice, notice how I talked about I really wanted to open up the hands. I wanna do the opposite now. Now I wanna close the racket face a little bit, move almost like I'm gonna move over towards an Eastern forehand, but I'm not gonna be in an Eastern forehand. But it's not gonna feel like that aggressive continental where you wanna hit a lot of spin. You're gonna turn it this way, so now when you go up here to hit the ball, you can feel like you can hit more of a flat part of the ball. You can, you can feel a lot more of that ball push through the strings and you're gonna get a lot more power because you're gonna need speed to be able to create the ace on this serve. Okay, the next thing I'm thinking about is the toss. The toss is extremely important on this serve. The biggest thing I'm thinking about when I'm hitting this toss is that I wanna make sure that the toss, we don't wanna to toss it super high to where it's tough to really judge where the ball is, but I do wanna make sure that that toss goes high enough to where I can really feel myself fully extend because the killer on this serve, since I'm hitting it flat and over a higher part of the net, when you're doing this, whether you're a lefty doing it on the, the do side or a right do it on the ad side, is the net's higher and you're, you don't have much spin on this. So it's very, very easy to collapse down into the net. That's the main thing that's gonna keep this serve from really being a highly successful serve. So if I can stay up 
and hit the serve, then I can get that ball to go over the net and down the box and get it off the court. So I really need that toss high enough to where when I go, I can feel a nice full extension. I want to stay as tall as possible when I'm hitting this serve. You also, again, need that serve to create the angle. We definitely need that serve out into the court. It's going to be tough to get this thing to snap in if you're tossing the ball you know, on the line, behind the line, you gotta make sure it goes out into the court when you're hitting this serve. Okay, the third thing I wanna focus on is the tennis ball. Where am I hitting that tennis ball? Again, we're trying to hit it flat. We're not coming around. So I'm actually, if I look at this pen one, I might actually be aiming a little bit off center here so I can hit it flat. I wanna push through it a lot, but I also want the ball to push out there and away, okay? I wanna hit it and then fall through away there so I get that ball to push through the court and off the court with a lot of power. So another thing that I'm thinking about, when I'm thinking about slicing a serve, right, I'm thinking about really curling and I'm certainly not thinking about pronation at all, but when I'm throwing this ball up, I'm thinking about hitting it pretty flush and flat and then pushing out and away, which you would consider a pronation move. So think about really pushing your thumbnail out and away from you, kind of like a quarterback throwing the ball. You want to really think about this, again, to make that ball go off the court. Extremely important when you're hitting this serve. And then we've just got a couple more elements that we need to focus on so we can hit a lot of aces in matches at big moments. Okay, final point we want to make on this. You want to get this ball off the court again. If we're looking at the toss master, the closer you stand to the line, right? The geometry is just not working with you with the court. And you're going to hit most of them wide. You're not going to be able to really get the ball to break off the court. So I want to stand outside here. I'm playing singles right about here. Gives me enough to where I can again get into the court. I'm not going to, I'm not leaving myself so far open to where I'm leaving too much of the court open. But if I'm right here, I can get that ball to go in the box and off the court. It helps me move the ball across the court. So always think about where you're standing, but remember to have a backup plan. Because if I stand here, then I can also go into the body and, and give a, a similar looking toss and, and I can add different serves to kind of um, still make my opponent have to guess where I might be serving. Okay, the third serve we want to have to ace any tennis player out there is we want the hard slice up the middle. Okay, so as a lefty now, look what's happened. I've moved more to the middle. Now I want to be here because if I'm here, it's not easy to make that thing break. If I get closer to the midline now here, now I can hit the ball in the box and still get to break almost towards the ad side, which is really cool. Now again, if you're a righty, you're doing this on the ad side. And this is a great serve because two of the best servers I can think of that do this are Serena Williams, she was amazing at this serve, and Riley Opelka. Now what's different? We've got to go to the grip again. When I'm going to use the grip, remember how we talked about in the slice serve out wide, how you want a big Milos Ronish open racket face. Not so on this one because when we're hitting the out wide serve, it's all about the angle that's making us win the point and getting us some free aces. This, you need some spin, but you need speed because you're hitting through the middle of the box, so you're not, you don't have as much angle to work with. So this is gonna have to be more of a power serve with a hint, with a dash of slice. And that's what Serena and Riley Opelka were so good at. In fact, Riley Opelka would stand here, so let's start talking about the toss. He'd stand here, and he tossed that ball, you know, to the opposite, opposite court right here. He'd throw it way out here so he could then come and he's so tall and really get around that ball and make that ball move. But he's pushing through it and hitting it fairly flat. So remember when I was talking about, let's go right to the tennis ball now. Now that you guys kind of know what we're focusing on, we can go a little faster through everything is when I was hitting the slice out wide, I was really looking about going there. Now I'm going to go here and really look to push through the ball. When I can do that and, and time it the right way and, and stand right here and again think about a lot of fast racket at speed but not cutting, not so much cutting the ball like that, although that was pretty good. You see how that ball moved? I mean that would be pretty effective. But if I can get that same kind of action, maybe not as much action with more pace, see like that, you see how that ball moves and breaks. It's just a matter of warming up and, and getting the zone. Uh, to be able to get this down, 
but you can see I need to rotate my, my hips a little more. That's, that's a little better. So as I'm doing this, the feeling of the snap is really good, but my hips and my shoulders are not releasing early enough. So you need to release the, the hips and the shoulders early enough so you can make the ball break more to the middle. And the more you do that, you can get that ball to go up the middle. And I'm going to get one right here because I feel I just got to turn earlier. And you can see now it's starting to go to the spot I want. And if they're going long, what's the correction, guys? If they're going, there it is, right there. The correction was I was snapping too late, okay? That's why it's important to warm up before matches so you really have your body flowing. Very, very hard for me to talk and not be warmed up and then execute, but I know exactly why I'm missing. And the more I do it, I can figure out that problem and solve it. Okay, number four, the fourth go-to serve to be able to rack up those aces is down the, down the middle on the ad side. Again, when I'm serving in a match, I, I will use this kind of flat slice a lot down the tee in my matches. Again, it's going to the backhand, and since it's got some slice on it, and I'm a lefty, it feels very natural. So I'm gonna use that serve a lot. When I come here, and now I'm on the ad side, to go flat down the tee is a serve that I'm gonna be using less often. I'm gonna mostly be hitting out wide and into the body with slice. So I need to use this mat, this, this, I like to use this when I'm up in the score, 30 15s, 40 loves, or sometimes on a big point where I'm just feeling it, or if I start to notice my opponent cheating over because I've just made a nightmare for, for them all day, putting them in the corner, they start to move over there. I'm like, okay, I can show you, I can hit it up the T. Right, now as a righty, again, we're gonna show you both angles, so don't worry about it, but you're going, you're doing this on the uh, do side, all right? And you will be going at people's backhand. So you might wanna do it more often than I do it on the ad side. Now, the big thing that I've gotta work on when I'm doing this, again, the grip, guess what? When we wanna go flatter, we don't go Milos Rona style. We, we go a little more, almost kinda of cheat and feel like we're, we're leaning towards an, an Eastern forehand, not an Eastern backhand. So you can do that as long as you're still in the Continental Grip family. That's what you wanna be doing. And there's the grip. We again need to toss a nice amount of height on it because as you're snapping and being aggressive, the more you flatten things out, the net becomes a bigger problem. So I want to be able to toss that ball up to feel great extension here and then the timing of the snap. And then the final thing that I want you to focus on besides, oh, here's my buddy B2. Hey, B2. Um, we want to be close to the line again here. The more I'm moving here, it's going to want to slide into the body. And that's my biggest struggle when I hit this serve is I've got to hold my hips and my shoulders longer. My hips and my shoulders are so used to swaying in matches because I slice a lot. So I've got to really, even though we want this to be relaxed and move, it's not like we want to be completely locked, but you've got to hold it longer to the net post or else it's going to break into the body. And we want this ball to be going through the court and stay as straight as possible. So let's see if I can do that as I'm hitting this serve. See how that broke? And that one went more straight, okay? So I was able to make that correction. What did I do? I held longer and also focused on the second one, pushing out here a little more. So you can see the first one was breaking the body, which I told you was a problem. The second one I was able to correct. So there you go, guys. There are four money serves you can use to ace anyone in matches. I'm sure you're excited to hit the court. If you need more help, I've got your back. I've got 33 free videos. This course you can take advantage of called Serving A to Z. That's gonna go through all the concepts we went on through today, just in a deeper level. It's a fantastic course, 33 free, free videos. And that's also gonna put you on my email list to join my seven day serve challenge in early 2023. We'll probably get, kick it off in February. I like to do it in that month because this is when you can start to really transform things in the off season. You want to be looking right now, December, January, February, and the March 
before the spring season starts, this is when you want to work on the things that you, you know that you need to change and transform. So you definitely want to be doing that seven day serve challenge with me. So you want to get on my email list. So take advantage of that right now by clicking up here. And uh, hey, if you liked uh, this video, if you're still watching it, please give this video a like. It really helps the channel a lot. And subscribe if you want to see myself and B2 back for another video. We love helping all the totally obsessed tennis players out there with their game. And we'll see you on the next one.